I'm Camille Tudy, FedScoop's uh, Editorial Director, and I'm here with Dr. Pillay, who is the CTO for IT at NASA. Welcome. Okay, good morning. Good morning. Uh, talk a little bit about what you're doing in the innovation space. Okay, yeah, we have several programs at NASA, uh, which we are trying to push the envelope in terms of innovation. And one is focused on engaging lots of people outside NASA, and that's an open innovation program. And the other one is the one that's focused on engaging the bright minds of NASA employees and staff uh, within the organization. And that's focused on a program called IT Labs. Uh, so let me talk a little bit about the success of the, we have had at the Open Innovation Program. Uh, this past April, uh, we did a crowdsourcing activity that engaged over 10,000 people around the globe. Uh, in 83 cities located around the world in, uh, in a 48-hour period. Uh, they worked on 58 different problems, most of them generated by NASA people, NASA employees, uh, which looked at solutions, uh, were challenging people to come up with um, solutions to these problems. And uh, over 770 solutions were developed in that 48-hour period, which is a huge amount of success. And if you look at the return on investment, we are talking about the neighborhood of 10 to 12 million dollars for an investment about probably about $500,000. Uh, that includes our civil service time and our contractor support and travel and all the logistics. And, and there are even more people who wanted to participate. Well, over a thousand of them, uh, or 1,500 of them, were essentially virtual participants as well. Uh, so the next stage in that program is to take the solutions that are developed and then essentially internalize it and see how we can bring that to fruition. The other program, if I may spend a few minutes talking about that, is called IT Labs. And every year we send out an annual call for proposals and ideas. And that goes to the entire uh, NASA employees uh, and, and the staff. Uh, and it's not focused just on the IT folks. And the purpose of that is to identify ideas from everyone and also issues and problems that they're facing so that we do have some I, uh, focus on the type of problems we need to address. And we have been essentially providing seed money to get those activities to start. And this is the second year uh, we have done that. So we have about 25 promising technologies in the incubator, if I can use that word, uh, to essentially then take the best of the best and then bring them into production, uh, which will benefit all of NASA. Federal agencies are always talking about how they're um, facing increasingly tougher fiscal uh, climates. Um, how can the government leverage uh, and do more with less when it comes to IT? Yeah, uh, quite often, uh, typically, you cannot do more with less. Uh, however, uh, one of the things we are trying to focus, and I think that's why I wanted to, I spend a few minutes talking about our innovation program. Uh, because if you were to look at any environment, and especially these days with continued declining budgets, uh, the only way out of that predicament and be able to stay within the budget box that you're given are two choices. One is continue to reduce services, and that is not something that uh, employees and our partners would be happy with. But the other idea is to invest in innovation. And by doing uh, and doing the latter, which is to really focus on innovation, you come up with new ways of doing things, new ways of doing business, and also introducing new technologies. So in the end, uh, everybody benefits because the employees are now working with more, uh, with smarter technologies, and they can be far more be far more productive, mm -hmm. and and that does reduce the operational uh, cost curve. So. Uh, and we have, and NASA, like other agencies, have taken significant reductions, especially when you're talking about institutional spending. Okay. Go ahead. Um, what's one of the uh, current key projects you're working on? Well, one of the things we are aggressively looking at is mobility strategy. Uh, last year, we uh, put together a team of stakeholders and uh, vendors, and I like to call them partners, about 20 of them. And we came up with a going forward strategy in terms of how we need to aggressively embrace the concept of mobility. And mobility is one of those things that I've looked at uh, that does a lot of moving parts. And so we have essentially broken that into about 30 actionable uh, small projects, each of which can um, bring significant benefits to the agency. And 
some of them is involves bring your own device to work. And so we are actively looking at how can we leverage that. Um, because when you look at the mobility space, this is an area in which that, um, based on our administrator's vision of being able to work from anywhere, really addresses that. So we are looking at some of the projects we're looking at is how can we replace our antiquated telephone system uh, with more, mo more mobile devices so that ac essentially accelerates our progress towards that, being able to support uh, our employees be able to work from anywhere. The whole concept of video and teleconferencing and be able to integrate voice, video, and data and then sharing documents on demand and be able to do that from anywhere rather than have to go to a physical location, a specific location, or a teleconference or video conference and conferencing room to do that. And then the other way is to also to be able to deploy some of our applications on more on mobile platforms, uh, and that can coexist with completely open applications so that we are able to now start to look at how we can essentially truly implement uh, risk-based uh, strategies for our applications which can coexist with completely open applications. Uh, ultimately, what we need to do is to focus our attention on securing data and applications as opposed to protecting endpoint devices and perimeter. And so that's another strategy we are looking at actively to see how do we get there. So by embracing some of these newer trends and aggressively going after them, we believe we not only benefit and improve the productivity of our employees, uh, but also reduce the cost in NASA as well. What are some of the challenges your uh, agency has overcome in implementing mobility? Well, uh, one of the things that we just got started on that in terms of I think in a couple of weeks we'll be sending out a notice in terms of how people can securely bring their personal devices and access, start to access NASA services, primarily initially email. So we are making slow steps in that regard, uh, but in the long run we will see more of that happening. Uh, ultimately, we need to learn how to leverage technologies that people already possess uh, rather than government continuing to provide these endpoint devices. Uh, because almost everybody, especially now when you look at the next generation of employees that we have, the younger generation, they are already fully accustomed to a set of tools that they prefer uh, because they have essentially grown up with them. So our thinking is instead of the government then coming up with a standard issue device for everyone, why don't we leverage what people already have and then how do we accommodate that? Now it's quite a bit of a different kind of thinking because historically we have saved money by standardizing endpoints. So now we are saying we want to accommodate the diversity of different endpoints but at the same time be able to come up with strategies that will integrate them. So we are trying to look at different ways of doing that by looking at application and data layers as opposed to focusing on devices. Dr. Pillay, it's been a pleasure having you speak with Fed Scoop TV. Thank you. Okay, thank you for the opportunity. Thank Have you. a good day.